Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today we're going to be going over your most important free-to-play deck. But before I get into that, let's do some mastery stuff and some pack stuff. I've continued to do some dailies here and there, and I've got some packs and things on the mastery tree that I've earned. So I'm going to go drop some bombs. Uh, let's see, any of these I actually have? Probably not. I'll just keep working on the blue track. I am covert go blue after all, but call me CGB. I like that better. All right, let's go into the packs. We've got nine Eldrain packs to open, so show me something sweet. And Opportunistic Dragon, it's an interesting one in red. It's okay, nothing too exciting there. Some wild cards, of course, nice. Castle Garenbrig, excellent for green decks and go big decks. Mystical Dispute's pretty interesting and is a solid playable. Castle Embreth will go right into our red decks, so that is a nice hit. I do try to open all of the packs on this account in front of everybody. A blue castle will look nice in the decks that play blue. And crushing this analysis. Opt is fine. Fabro Elder is a nice rare that we might get to use at some point. In fact, I want to use that in my deck today if I can remember. Stonecoil Serpent is a very nice rare that can fit into a number of decks to fill space. So as a free-to-play player, that has to be a nice look. Old wildcard, why the heck not? Drown in the Lock, a demure favorite over here. Lots of Fairy Guide Mothers, which will go great in the white deck. Another Opportunistic Dragon? It's a rigged. It's a conspiracy. Another Grumgully as well, and a worthy knight as we work on that knight's deck. All right, let's get into your most important and bestest deck on your free-to-play account. Once you've opened a number of packs, done a number of quests, this might be hard to build right out of the gate, but uh, about a few weeks in, you can probably throw together something like this. Now, first of all, where's my Faberro Elder? Because I think that would go very well in this deck. I actually have two. Sweet, I must have opened another one or one one along the way. So I'm gonna put those in. Um, what do we want to remove for those? There's so many things here I love, but without explaining the deck first, it's kind of tough. So I'm going to, I, I swear I'm going to find a card to cut. In the meantime, what is going on? Five color free to play. Why would we do this? What is this for? Why do I call it your most important deck? This will not be your best deck at all. Um, it will probably not have the greatest win rate, and I don't know if I'd even play it in ranked unless you really love it. What this deck will do for you, though, is give you a testing ground for all of those cool rares and mythics that you open that you're not sure what to do with. So the recipe is pretty simple. Back in my day, it was very early days of Magic, they had some cards like Undiscovered Paradise, and they made this deck called, and Birds of Paradise, that was a card too, and they made this deck called Five Color Green, which was, it's like 90% green, and the green plays a bunch of cards that are green that can make mana of any color, and then you use that mana of any color to cast cards from the other colors to cover up your weaknesses. It had like black removal spells, uh, like terror, and white enchantment and artifact spell removal spells, like disenchant, and it, I can't remember what the red card was, but this was a very fun deck a million years ago, around the time Mirage was released, if you want to know. And you can still do it today. It's a tried and true strategy that has worked throughout Magic history. The green cards in this case that make the mana of any color that we need are Paradise Druid and Gift of Paradise. Using those, you can cast spells of all different types. I have a few other ways to help me out. Beanstalk Giant is one of them and Golden Egg is one of them. So those two cards also go in the deck. And then once you add those to the deck, you add in your best removal spells. So we have cards like Bone Crusher Giant, we have Mortify. Um, and then you add your mythics and your rares, your planeswalkers and your powerful creatures, things of that nature. So you see the Hydra Krasis, you see the Ravager Worm, you see the Chandra Awakened Inferno that we've opened, the Ethereal Absolution, the Agent of Treachery, the Great Hench. You take all these awesome cards that you're not quite sure how to build a deck around or don't have a deck for yet, or even if you're not quite sure what they do, because you're, they're 
it's your first time playing with them or something like that and you throw them into this five color pile for testing. This is your testing ground for all kinds of weird things while you learn what you like and what you love about magic. And then as you uncover things that are more you per se, uh, then you move on down the line and you find other decks that more meet your standards of what to play. In this deck, you're going to want to do this crazy thing that I've done, which is basically you grab one of all these rare lands that you get uh, you get a whole bunch of rare lands from opening those intro decks if you unlock them all. And you throw a bunch of those in here, and especially the green ones. You make your mana base a little bit of these, like one each of the other basics, so that you can fetch them with cards like Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Beanstalk Giant. But then you make any leftovers green. You want to play a lot of land, because you're going to need a lot of land to cast your spells. So I usually run 26 lands in a deck like this. Right now I'm on 24. 24 is a little bit more fun, but don't be afraid to go up to 26 if you have trouble filling the deck. Also, I've got some golden eggs down here filling some space too. I think those are the trim though. I'm going to cut those from the deck. I also have this Wicked Wolf. The only food I have to eat with it are the golden eggs, so maybe the Wicked Wolf can go. Since Fabril Elder is green, it doesn't add to the Elder. Yeah, I think I'll just run another egg instead. I think the Wicked Wolf can take a vacation as much as I love it. Using Gift of Paradise and using Beanstalk Giant, we try to ramp from three to five, and Faber or Elder on its own can do the same thing, which means we don't need any four drops in our curve. We can start casting fives and sixes. So this is my list. Your list will probably look different. If you have been going for a month or two in your free-to-play account, you will probably have a different card pool than me. That's okay. But the strategy of the deck is to play a certain number of ramp cards, and things that fix your mana, a bunch of good removal spells, and then your biggest, strongest rares and mythics, your planeswalkers, your powerful artifacts, your powerful creatures, and give those a try in this build, okay? So, I think I've explained enough about what the deck is and how it's supposed to work. Let's go play some fun games. Oh, I, I also forgot to mention, a very big key about this deck is if you build it with a lot of colors in mind, this can do almost any quest for you. So if you enjoy playing this deck and you fill it with cards that you really love, almost any quest that comes up to get your free to play goals, this deck can help you meet it. So it's a very fun way to keep the grind going, especially since the grind can get very difficult if you only have one or two good tier one decks. This is a break from tier one, but it's a good experimental kind of proving ground for your cards as you learn more about the game and what kind of mage you want to be. All right, let's dive in. Let the five color free to play nonsense begin. Okay, this hand is interesting. We can go get a green source with the passage, which means we can cast the beanstalk giant, which means we, if we find a land, we can cast Tulsimir on turn five and Hydroid Krasis with two lands on turn six. So that's very good. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to lead on a Temple of Triumph or if I want to go get my green source right away. And then we go tap land into tap land. And I think it's best to see if I can just scry my way to a forest or another green source that comes in the bat enters the battlefield untapped since this can be an untapped source later in the game. So I'll lead on Temple of Triumph but it might mean the golden egg sits in my hand for a while rather than playing it on turn two. Our opponent takes a quick mulligan. Let's see if they are ready to keep a hand now. And Temple of Triumph, looking for a green source. That will not quite be what I'm looking for. I already have one of those. And you never want too many of them. They're really filler to make sure that your colors work better. And our opponent's going to open on Once Upon a Time, which is a bad sign for us. This is a, a chase rare card, and it's popular in all of the best decks. So here in Unranked Free to Play, we're probably going to run up against a top tier deck, which can be very challenging. And they open with Lovestruck Beast. So this looks like Gruel Adventure. So we're going to want to go get green. We could play the Golden Egg and just plan to sacrifice it to make the green mana, rather than gain life with it. I actually don't mind that too much. It's a little risky because I might have to pay two life to use the Sacred Foundry, but we get a card deeper in our deck, which could make a difference. Spending two mana on a turn when you wouldn't use it is better than spending two mana later trying to find something. But yeah, this Gruel deck is probably going to come for our face. 
We do have some good cards ready to go. And there is a Kroll Harpooner. So the opponent's curving out just fine. Probably the best thing we could find is a Time Wipe. That's a Deputy of Detention, which is okay. But let's ramp. So sacrificing the egg to make the green mana that we need, going to get more green mana that we will need. We also need blue. It's going to be interesting seeing what happens after we draw our card, because we might run into mana problems with this hand, despite a pretty good start. All right, if our opponent has to hard cast a once upon a time there rather than play a lovestruck beast, I'm kind of wondering what they're going for. But it probably means they have a questing beast next turn, like a really powerful play that they want to do. And a Rimlock Knight, perhaps, this turn, just to do more damage to me? Sure. Down to 11. Opponent proving their awesomeness at beatdown. Hmm. I have some options here. And it looks like they're made for me, as I don't have double or triple green or anything quite close. So we'll play you. We'll use it to get the token off the board. That way there's no 1-1 one, one for the Lovestruck Beast to attack with. And I think we Bone Crusher this while our opponent is tapped out in case they have some kind of pump spell for the Harpooner. A Collision Colossus could be a blowout if we go to use it on the Harpooner. But this game it might get tough here. We need to draw more land. And that is the Questing Beast I feared. We didn't have good play around that. The wolves don't trade off well with it. That is all right. That's another land. Now we can play the Hydroid Crasis at least. And playing it for four, it can brawl with the beast. It can gain us back some life. It can get us some cards. And there's some mana fix in the form of Gift of Paradise. All right, the three one Rimlock Knight has joined the battlefield. I'm not very afraid of that card. Perhaps we can stall the opponent for a moment. Questing Beast is coming. I think I'm just blocking away with the Krasis. If the Krasis is in the graveyard, it's a good target for Cavalier of Thorns later. If we're trying to grind our opponent to dust. Hmm. Why do you think the opponent said go? Do they really think that they're going to Bone Crusher Giant something? Rather than play their Lovestruck Beast? Maybe the Lovestruck Beast is waiting for an Edgewall Innkeeper to hang out with. Regardless, I think blue is one of our most unused colors. Let's enchant that island with this Gift of Paradise. That way we're well set up for next turn with Tulsimir or Cavalier of Thorns or Ravager Worm. We don't need to play the other Gift of Paradise for that, so I'll add a Bone Crusher Giant to the battlefield instead. I'll hold back the Deputy. I would gladly trade it for the Rimlock, Rimrock Knight. And the opponent makes no play. They didn't even try to try to bone crush my face, which I find strange. It's kind of strange. Another questing beast. Awesome. Bone Crusher is ready for this. Let me try my impression. Bone Crusher is ready. Dig it. <clears throat> nah, not good. Not 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 the finest. We do what we can. So, we'll make these trades. We know the opponent has a Bone Crusher Giant, so there's no way to try to like trade down or trade up the way that the cards line up. We just want everything to die. And a longer game suits us very well. The opponent has decided to go face. Fine with me. So we can play the Elder, but then we don't have enough mana to play anything else. If we play the Gift of Paradise, we could play the Worm or the Cavalier. Those are both pretty good options. Black isn't one of the colors we use the most, so I'll enchant that. And yeah, let's send out the Cavalier of Thorns. It's got a huge butt. And a blue-black seems nice for the situation, but I'm not paying life for it. I'm stingy like that. And at this point... Well, the opponent's going to try to find an Edgewall Innkeeper because then they can play it and play some adventure creatures, draw some cards, and try to get back in the game. I'm going to kill that thing. <laughs> just, so it, just so we're aware. When you see an Edgewall Innkeeper, it must die. This, this, this card is a real obnoxious one. Ooh. 
Well, that's a beautiful sight. An absolutely beautiful sight. We do need, um, we just need a single white for Tulsimir. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play the Great Henge. Our opponent's probably going to get sick of what I'm about to do to them very quickly. Now, when this enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card and we get a fight. You are dead. And we get some life. It's a wonderful thing. Hey, we still have mana for the Elder. That's pretty sweet. And it gets pumped from the Great Henge. At this point, I have a few things I'd trade. Let's try to turn the tables on the opponent and push an end to the game. Hey, we did it. The game did, in fact, end. Well, well, it did launch. Hmm. We can try this hand out. It's interesting. We can try to scry for another land. We have a Bone Crusher Giant to hold something off. If we find a black source, and we could use the egg if we needed to, and we have the combination of Hydroid Crisis and Nyssa, which is very strong. So let's see where this takes us. Mountain. Oh boy. I have a bad feeling about this already. We can cast you, and you're sort of a ramp spell. But against red, it's very likely to die. And very easily, too. I think I should dig for something else. Because if I just put something out there and it gets shocked, it's a terrible waste of a turn, especially a three mana card like this. If my opponent were showing me blue mana or green mana, I think I would keep that card. Against red, there's just no way. And Chandra's Regulator is the play. I'm very happy to draw a Gift of Paradise there. We'll go ahead and run out a Golden Egg. see what happens okay land off the top my opponent if they're they, they said hello it could mean a lot of things but maybe they watch my channel if they do they might be playing my Chandra my Chandra tribal deck that went undefeated that's uh, a scary proposition I don't think we could possibly defeat it let's play this untapped land do I want to go get a land if I get another forest, it makes Nyssa a lot better than if I play the Gift of Paradise. But the Gift of Paradise prepares me for more different types of things. But I, I think I'm going to take the forest line. With Nyssa in hand, it makes sense. Alright, if it is the Chandra tribal deck, I expect a Chandra right about now. And there indeed is a Chandra, which I don't have reasonable ways to compete with. Killing Planeswalkers isn't exactly what my deck does. Because those cards are usually rare and hard to get, and usually only in black. So, it's tough to compete with. I guess what I'll do here is I'll shock myself and get Nyssa out there. And we'll go for it. I don't want it to animate the forest, because I don't have a good use for two mana, and I want to preserve my forests. I have a lot of red sources, so throwing this mountain into the fire seems fine. If I actually, if I attack this, the opponent can turn around and deal damage to my Nyssa. That's not good. And if with Chandra's Triumph, they can kill Nyssa. We definitely can't have that. So I can't even attack this Chandra. Even though with Regulator, it's going to draw multiple, multiple cards. It's a very bad situation. But at least we can try to wait on killing this until the opponent's dealt with my own Nyssa. Since it puts a pretty tough clock on them. Now I by no means have a lock on Chandra Tribal. It existed before my video, it will exist after, and people always do their own things with it. But I am curious if this is a viewer, so I'm going to be looking for any cards that I don't run in my version. And the opponent is already t tanking really hard. Like, really hard. I know I've been there sometimes too. Alright, fair enough, you're thinking. Fair enough. But I really would rather not they treat my beating me in free play like it's the Pro Tour. I guess there's pressure if they think they're on YouTube. It is kind of another clue that they're a viewer. Another Chandra and another Regulator, the third one. They need a land to play this Pyromancer. If they have it, it's a good play. But yeah, they're, I mean, look at this. They've used almost their entire timer for turn five. 
They've used a timeout already. Their their turn is just gonna pass if they don't freaking do something. And it, they have chosen the novice. Ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. What's the novice going to do? Better hurry. They're scaring me. And yeah, your time's up. Well. Okay. If you play, so if you know my channel and you play against me, I know you might be tempted to think extra hard because of YouTube, but this is way more embarrassing. Don't make me, don't make me put this on YouTube. <laughs> it's hard to find good games as it is. Just make some plays. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I expect that they would have wrecked me. I was definitely behind there. The crisis was going to be interesting, but they're going to draw so many cards and I can't really kill this without killing myself. So if I were them, what would my play be that turn? I would, hmm, I don't know the rest of the hand. But you definitely need to get the, I don't, that's tough, whether or not you play the Novice Pyromancer, I'll admit. But I do think you run it out there, you use it to make mana, and then you play a Chandra's Triumph from your hand if you have one. That is what I would do for sure. Or a Lava Coil, or anything that might remove the Mountain or damage the Nissa a significant amount. Well, without mana fix, this hand is a really risky keep, so I mulligan them, and there we go, and this gets a green. What are we getting rid of? Fine Finality. It's a late game card, it's way too early. It won't stay on the bottom of our deck because we'll shuffle our library with Fabled Passage. So right away, the opponent gets off to the races. So we can go Scryland, um, Land Bone Crusher, Land Mortify, Land... Use this to get green, Gift of Paradise. So we'll lead on the Scryland. And I don't need that. We'll need some of those powerful mid-rangey draws because our opponent's definitely looking aggressive. You don't play one mana two ones without being ready to swing. And there you have it. Play out the planes. Hold up Bone Crusher Giant. See what the opponent commits to before we kill something. And yeah, I need to kill this veteran, but I can do it next turn. Let's kill the knight now so I don't take any damage, and let's kill it before the veteran resolves, because the knight would put a plus one, plus one counter on the veteran if there was another knight on the battlefield when it died. And the opponent has a mana they don't get to use. We drew another Mortify, which is pretty nice. Go ahead and pass the turn. Decide whether or not to Bone Crush or Mortify here, and Mortify makes a lot more sense. The thing is, next turn, we want to be able to play Gift of Paradise and the other Bone Crusher Giant. So, that'll resolve. The opponent will attack. We'll see if they want to cast a Rimlock Knight. Doesn't look like it. We'll mortify the veteran. Agent of Treachery, huh? All right, let's go get green. It will we'll be untapped at this point. And oh, we'll put it on the white source. Or actually, because we have Tulsimir in the deck, and we could still cast Tulsimir, right? No, actually, we couldn't. So what land to enchant is kind of weird. Let's go with the Black Source, then. And it, it will depend on the individual contents of your deck. Which lands you need to enchant. But, like, I couldn't have cast Tulsimir with the Gift of Paradise on the Plains. Flamed Contender. So before that resolves, let's stomp the veteran so the opponent gets no action from their acclaimed Contender trigger. And now I could Mortify this. The opponent might have another acclaimed Contender, so I will. I'll just Mortify it. But let's wait and see if our opponent plays another acclaimed Contender. If we put out a blocker and they do have another one, then they get value off it, which is what we're hoping to avoid. And they say go. All right, let's try this Risen Reef because if we find another land, our Ravager Worm gets really good. We don't, but we found an egg. We'll play the egg and draw a card. Digging for that extra land. Of course, Teferi's a fine find as well. But we're a few lands from an Agent of Treachery, which can be very overpowering. That is a 2-2 Flying Haste. So I gotta take two. All right, let's make some mana. Let's put the Gift of Paradise over here, so we're ready for next turn, and we can play Teferi Time Raveler. 
I'll plus it. See if the opponent wishes to attack it. And I'll attack the opponent with this Risen Reef. And we'll see if they can kill Teferi. If they spend resources killing it, I'm okay with that. Better for my life total that way. Their third Inspiring Veteran. And a Glass Casket for my Reef. It's an aggressive cut. They've got a lot going on. No more games indeed. That's why we're here, playing Magic. Let's drop a Ravager Worm on the opponent. And we'll put a plus one, plus one counter on it and play defensively. And we'll fight a creature we don't control, which will be the Flyer, which we can't block. And now there's a big body between us, this Inspiring Veteran, or Teferi. And the opponent uses Eternal Isolation to put a creature of power four or greater on the bottom of the library. There's one you don't see every day. And they do have another Acclaimed Contender and another Acclaimed Contender. So they're getting a value train going. And our Teferi is in danger. Let's see what's on top of our deck. We're going to have Agent of Treachery next turn. That is a very large Beanstalk Giant, potentially. I'll keep that around. Now for this turn, let's put the Giants on the field. They size up pretty nice against these, and it's better than Paradise Druid, which right now, not the greatest blocker against an Acclaimed Contender. I'm sure the... Okay, more Eternal Isolation. Take two. I was wondering if the last card was another one of these. And another Acclaimed Contender. So the opponent, they're getting something going. They have drew three Acclaimed Contenders and three Inspiring Veterans. And that's their fourth Inspiring Veteran. So they've had all of their Lords. So if we're going to steal something from them to try to stabilize the board, it should be... It should be one of their Lords so that they don't outsize us. So we'll grab this right now. And if Teferi lives, we get to bounce our Agent of Treachery and do it again. Okay. This card is important. It has to be a way to get to Teferi or I'm stealing more of your things. That's a face attack. Okay. Well, I'll trade with one of these because that's eventually going to happen anyway. But I can save the other block because Teferi is going to steal the other Inspiring Veteran. And then my creature sizing will be better than theirs. Vanguard. Well, that flyer's a bit annoying. Ooh. Oh, that'll be the scoop bringer, I'm sure. Yeah, let's get rid of Teferi, but steal their flyer, I think, is the right play. The Ethereal Absolution is coming, but it doesn't have to come today. Elder. We have a blue, a white, and a red. It's a pretty big Elder, and against that, against them, it's a pretty good card. And this is a black permanent, so the Elder can be a 5-5. The opponent's been keeping the, the uh, pedal to the metal for the most part, making our life tough. But this is a big draw. They need something good. And it's Joust. Which, plus two, plus one, and then they fight. So the opponent kills their own flying Sky Knight Vanguard and attacks with the 6-3. I think I can take it. I have a way to gain life in the Golden Egg. The opponent's pretty low on stuff. They didn't use the castle, which is kind of weird. They could have had an extra point of damage there. All right, let's use the Beanstalk Giant. Let's go get another land. And then we'll play the Ethereal Absolution. I think a forest is fine. I don't think it particularly matters. Then this fixes creature sizing for the rest of the game for sure. And eh, we'll just slow this down. The longer the game takes, the better for us. We don't have to try to turn the corner here against knights, I don't think. And yeah, I had a feeling this would be a scoop bringer after it resolved. We can cast the Bone Crusher Giant, the Chandra, and the Agent with the mana we have. It's just pretty slow, but I think Bone Crusher and the fact that these are Scrylands to help us find more action is okay. We are missing white. So I'll put the white card on the bottom until I can be sure that we're going to cast it. I guess we got a nice because of a Temple of Epiphany square off. I have a feeling my deck's a lot different from yours. Okay, that's a double white card. That's a bit unfortunate. Let's keep digging. 
And Goblin Electromancer, that will have to die. What a chatty one we have here. Maybe this will shut him up. And there's a golden egg. That can sort of produce white mana and get me a little deeper in my deck. It's a little awkward. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to keep this. But YOLO. We'll see what happens. Oh my goodness. Straight up emote spam. That's what I get for being nice. No! Stop with those. They're very annoying. Alright, let's get the Bone Crusher onto the field. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to draw a use for the Time Wipe anytime soon. And yeah, they're just going to spam hello for the rest of the game, I suppose. We could mute. It's always an option. I kind of... I don't know. I kind of like seeing just how far they'll go with it. But man, they are wasting time now at this point. Maybe they don't know they can be muted. It's like the mental game, right? I know they can be muted. Do they know they can be muted? Will they stop emoting if I stop emoting? Or will they continue emoting? Maybe they just want to see themselves on YouTube, on YouTube that deeply badly. Notice me. Notice me! Oh my god! I must be noticed here. Well, let's see what happens. We might have a counter here, but if they do, we still just have to get through it. No counter yet. Let's turn on the forest. I'm going to use the forest to cast the egg. I could attack first. I sort of suspect something bad will happen. And if I'm worried about that, I should just play the egg. Otherwise, I'll lose out on the mana. I'm just going to play the egg. It's kind of loose. There's a draw. So they're probably Arclight Phoenix, but if they're burning a Radical Idea right now, they don't have any of their good cards. And you do see them burning through a lot of land there, so yeah. They're short some good stuff. If we get to untap, and our forest is alive, we have Agent of Treachery and Chandra ready to go. That's an Iron Craig Pyromancer. That's not good. And that's not good. Let's see if they kill my forest or my Nyssa. Forest down, that's very bad. All right, we need a good draw step. We have one white source available from the egg. That is another white source. Elementals? No, they're wizards. I could steal you. Can I? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I cannot. I think that the time wipe it has to be then, which is unfortunate because it means I have to return one of my own lands to my hand, but it's better than blowing it up. Yeah, and I get my Godless Shrine back and your toys are gone. And that's the way we like it. It is too bad I lost my forest to play a golden egg. It's possible I should have had more restraint there. Okay. That is also annoying. So we can have six mana. Chandra can kill this. Chandra and Nyssa sitting in a tree. Let's use the black source. The land for us. Stay back. I'm an explosively good pirate. Oh, that got their attention. They hadn't emoted for a while. It's like they were thinking or something. We'll take care of that. Crackling Drake. Will I have enough mana next turn to nab that? I think I will if nothing happens to my swamp. Never mind. It's a problem. All right. Well, we drew a blocker. Two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So we're definitely doing this. Let's get Which land don't we need the most? I guess this one. Behold, true power. 
One, two, three, four. Make a blocker. Hope it lives. Also trying to draw some. Also trying to draw some more good lands here. Having some issues finding forests in this game. It's pro providing difficult. More drakes. Gross. If the opponent has a lava coil here, we're in big trouble. But if we get to untap. Ooh, face. Well, I'm going to block anyway. Next turn we can uh, remove all the loyalty from Chandra to kill the other Drake, potentially. But yeah, I'll take that trade. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to top deck a land to cast the agent. Who would have thought with a Nissa on the battlefield this long we'd have so much trouble casting our agent? But that is the way it's been. Temple to the bottom. Where are your emotes? Your emotes drying up? When people emote constantly, it is a bit of a tell as the game goes on when they stop. It is a bit of a tell. All right, we'll bring this planes to life. What, Rax? Are, are we turning to roping now? Is that is that what you need? Are we reaching the roping stage of the game? Give me that Drake. My Drake. And let's keep plussing the Chandra on you. <laughs> no pressure. And there's the nice. At least they didn't forget the one emote of a turn rule that they set for themselves. Discard a land, draw a card with the radical idea. Sure. Yep. Dig it up. Somewhere in there you might find arc lights. I know it sucks when you play this deck and you half your, go half your deck without one. I've definitely been there. Lava Coil, your agent. Yep. Alright, agent down. Shock my face, cause reasons. And scoop. Could see that one coming. Chandra and Nissa. Dream team. We're facing a Chandra avatar with the name Regulator. If they're not playing Chandra's Regulator, it's a fail. Gift, forest, let's go. Lead on the scry land, but I don't need more land. I'm looking for big payoffs once I have all my mana together. Or more removal spells, maybe. But Tranquil Cove might be blue-white control. Let's launch the egg. Get a little deeper. Obviously, Nyss is a great draw. Time Wipe can be a great draw, depending what we're up against. Hmm. All right, let's get the ramp going. It's looking like a control deck, which, you know, that's tough. I certainly don't want to sit here for half an hour. Okay, Cloud can see her. Maybe it's a flyer deck. Maybe there's something else going on. Let's go ahead and play a gift here and a Paradise Druid so we have a ton of mana ready for next turn and see what the opponent has for us. Cloud can see her, can get him for two. We've gained a good amount of life, so we can take some hits. And there is another Seer. So, the Seers definitely make Nis it tough for Nyssa, and it is turning into the Flyer deck. Wow. Okay. To Fairy off the top. I don't think I want to animate any lands until after I blow up the board, which I think is a plan, but let's do the Ravager Worm first. And we'll go with Haste. And I'm going to eat your Cloud Conseer and attack you. So we start getting aggressive right away. But I plan to bounce the Ravager Worm when I cast the Time Wipe. And by having a board myself, it may force the opponent to commit to the board. So it might make our Time Wipe better. If they land a Sephara, if we have a Mortify to kill it. There's an Eagle. Do you want to keep attacking? I guess you have a life-linking bird, so it makes sense. And do you play something else? No. So they're holding up Negate or Rally with wings, something like that, when they have two mana open this way. The best way to sort of test that is to play Teferi. I really would love to play Teferi when I can also play Time Wipe, though. So my plan is to Mortify on their turn, see if they counter anything or do anything, and then the next turn Teferi Time Wipe. I think I'm a long way from dead, so I have time to do it. 
If that's the only thing I'm doing with my mana, maybe I should play Teferi this turn. But let's attack first and see what happens. Yeah, I guess if they counter Teferi this turn, they won't have one for next turn. They'll probably explode onto the board with all they have to get time wiped. Yeah, let's see what happens. If Teferi resolves, I can always just kill their eagle. Okay, easy mode. Bone Crusher can be good against them. It can kill a small flyer. So we have Mortify available. We'll wait till the opponent chooses their attacks. If they use Rally with Rally of the Wings or whatever it is, just for Teferi, I'm pretty happy about it. They might be thinking lethal thoughts. If they attack me all out, we know what's up. Yeah, they're doing lethal math. So this is 10, this is 16 damage that they can attack me for. Remember, I also have the golden egg, which I'm not going to touch because it highlights it. I don't want the opponent to think about it, but it can gain me life if I want to survive the attack. And it looks like instead they're choosing to go after Teferi, which is fine. Now I will target their eagle that's attacking Teferi, and they can't play any instants, so the rally with wings won't work. So Teferi is going to live. And since they can't play instants anyway, they may as well cast another creature if they have it. Okay. I guess that's not going to happen. Trust me. So I'm going to do this time wipe at instant speed. Let's go ahead and send in the Ravager Worm for some damage. I could send in the Paradise Druid too. Well, Bone Crusher Giant can also come down after I do the time wipe if I save the Druid. So I'll save the Druid. Plus, the Druid attacking makes it look really iffy, and the opponent. I might be able to get the opponent to make another weird play here if I'm patient. Like if they want to play Rally, they have to do it now. Or else it won't happen in combat. If they're super tuned in, I think they know a sweeper's coming. Because otherwise, why didn't I do more with all my mana? And it's going to be Conclave Tribunal. Let's see what they target. Probably Teferi. And they do. And they have the mana right up for negate right now, which we don't want to give them a chance to have. So we're going to play this before the Conclave Tribunal resolves. I think I meant to tap the Paradise Druid there to hold up the Bone Crusher Giant and forgot. Forgive me, everybody. So, we could play this and get it negated. We can play this and have an opening for the Great Henge next turn. I think we'll just play this with haste. Try to keep pressure on the opponent's life total. Rather than worrying about what it does or doesn't fight. Very Vandal. Okay. You play to 1-2. You take 4. You're getting very dangerously low. And that's part of the plan. Eventually they have to start blocking. Which makes their life much more awkward. I have to believe they have Negate or Rally of Wings, so we'll probably see one of those soon. And you see them keeping three mana open and choosing to tap the Vandal. That's interesting. It does feel like more counter spells. Well, this is a really good card to play into counter magic if we want to do that. Because even if they counter it, I still get the cards. And if they don't, we get a whole bunch of cards. So. Let's go ahead and drop a Krasis. If they don't counter it, then they have a big flying body to deal with. So it's a good deal. And we do hit some land, which is nice. We did need that. All right, land tapped, go. Okay, they're slow rolling something that they don't want to show me, but it's not if it's a counterspell, they're not using it very well. It's probably just a rally. And it might still be a negate. Negate is on the table. Okay. So, I guess it's time to do something. I think going for Nyss is interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can go for Nyssa and still have a Bone Crusher Giant available, for example. All right. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure what's better here, Great Henge or, or Nyssa. Both are pretty good. And I guess the opponent's 
ability to counter things was um, highly outmatched. What they probably had was Quench. I, I, if, I, if I had to put them on something after all that, I do think they have a Rally, but maybe they have a Quench. And the, the, as soon as Quench is outsized, the opponent's in a pretty bad spot. Yay, we got a booster. Let's go crack it. I'll also crack a pack here. Put an end on our excellent day. We got an innkeeper, which is great if we make an adventure deck. And we got a wishclaw talisman, which is kind of memey, but you can throw it in your five color uh, deck if you want to try it out and see how you like it. So that's my video of what I'm calling the most important deck in free to play. Definitely one of the most fun. You can do any quest with it. You can learn about your cards and the collection and play all of your favorites. And sometimes you can even be successful. So thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.